For this problem, I'm asked to calculate the work done by this vector field F along a curve C. And I'm given a description of C. So C is the oriented curve which starts at 0, 0 and moves along the parabola where y equals x squared to the point 2, 4. So let me go ahead and draw that. So I have a start point at 0, 0. I'm just going to follow that parabola up to 2, 4. Okay, that's simple enough. So to calculate this line integral, I need the kind of general form of a line integral, which is just the integral along the curve C of f dot dr, which is the integral of f of r of t dotted with r prime of t dt, where r of t is the parametrization of this curve. But before we go to all this work, it would be nice to know if f is conservative or not, because if it is, I can use the fundamental theorem of line integrals, and I don't have to go through this whole integral process. So to check that, let's look at the two-dimensional curve of f, and then if that curl is zero, I know that the function is conservative, and I can find a potential function. So let's recall how to calculate two-dimensional curl. It's the determinant of a two by two matrix. So the top row is partial derivatives, d dx and d dy. And the bottom row is actually the i and j components of this function. So I have y sine of x, and cosine of x. Now to take this determinant, I want to multiply the main diagonal. So d over dx of cosine of x, and then subtract the other diagonal, which is going to be d over dy of y sine of x. So let's go and calculate these partial derivatives. Well, the derivative of cosine x is going to be negative sine of x. And the partial derivative of y sine x with respect to y is just going to be sine of x. And I get that my curl is negative 2 sine of x, which is not identically 0. So f is not conservative, and I'm going to have to go through this whole line integral process. So let's go ahead and parametrize this curve. Well, we know it follows the line or the graph of y equals x squared. So the easiest way to do that is going to say t equals x. So then my parametrization r of t is going to be given by t comma t squared. And then I can just take the same bounds that I go for x. So from t equals 0 to t equals 2. OK, so I need to find f of r of t. And to do that, I want to plug in the i component of r everywhere I see an x in f, and then the j component everywhere I see a y. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have t squared sine of t. Comma cosine of t. Now let's go ahead and find r prime. So that's just taking the derivative with respect to t for each component in r. So the derivative of the first component, t, is just going to be 1. And the derivative of the second component, t squared, is going to be 2t. And now I want to take the dot product of these two vectors. 
So recall to do that, it's just the product of the i components of the vectors plus the product of the j components of the vectors. So 1 times t squared sine of t plus 2t times cosine of t. And now I just want to integrate this with respect to t over the interval t between 0 and 2. So let me go ahead and move over to the other board to do that integral. So now we want to write this integral. All right, and by linearity, I can split this integral up into two integrals, one for each term. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and start evaluating this first integral using integration by parts. So I'm going to say u equals t squared and dv equals sine of t. So that makes du 2t dt. And v is going to equal the integral of sine t, so negative cosine of t. And then let's go ahead and put this integral back together. So I'm going to have uv evaluated from 2 to 0. So negative cosine t t squared uh, minus the integral of v du. So negative cosine of t times 2t dt. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is adding this integral. And then I can add this to the other part of my integral, and I actually see that I have two terms that can combine. So I'm going to rewrite these two integrals as one integral of 4t cosine t dt. Okay, so let's go ahead and evaluate this portion. So I have negative t squared cosine of t evaluated from 0 to 2. So first let's plug in 2. I'm going to get negative 4 cosine of 2. Plus 0 times cosine of 0, which is just going to be 0. So that's all I have to show for this portion. And now let's work on this integral using integration by parts. So I'm going to say u equals 4t and dv equals cosine of t. So that makes du 4 dt. And v is going to equal sine of t. And let's go ahead and put this integral back together. So I have uv, 4t sine of t, evaluated from 2 to 0. Excuse me, evaluated from 2 to 0. Minus the integral from 2 to 0 of v du. So 4 sine of t dt.
Let's start by evaluating this portion. So let me go and plug in 2, and I'm going to get 8 sine of 2. And then when I plug in 0, I'm actually going to get 0. So this is all I have to show for this portion. Now let's work on this integral. So now this is an integral that I can evaluate pretty easily. So the integral of negative sine is going to be cosine. So I am adding 4 cosine of t evaluated from 2 to 0. And that is just going to give me 4 cosine of 2 minus 4. So let's combine all these terms. So I have a negative cosine 2 and a positive cosine 2, both multiplied by 4, that are going to cancel each other out. So what I'm left with is 8 sine of 2 minus 4. as my line integral. And let's assume that f is a force field measured in newtons and x and y are both measured in meters. And this is going to be 8 sine of 2 minus 4 joules. And that's our answer.